you may be seated. And Lily, if you'd like to come down and join us. And my other three girls, and Allie, and Mary, if you want to hang out by the uh, pulpit there. If you have a song sheet with you, if you could follow along for the lighting of the candles of the Advent wreath. Okay, so one, two, we're all set. Perfect. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, let us live in this world with temperance, justice, and piety. Heaven and earth will pass away. What you foretold shall be accomplished. You will come to judge the living and the dead. Keep us from being engulfed in worldly desires. Let your power be known, O Lord. Okay. So, Katrina, since you're right there, if you can light that candle right, you might want to step up on the step, go one up. And if not, I can take the candle out for you. Maybe, hold on, maybe I'll shake it. Here you go. There you go. Okay, candle number one. Would you like to pass that to your sister now? Candle number two. Get up. Beautiful. And Lillian, if you'd like to come over here and light the uh, third candle, the candle of joy, which is today's message. Yeah, you got it. And Mary, if you would like to do the reading. Sing joyfully to the world, serve the world, serve the world with gladness. Why is the season of joy so often filled with stress? Instead of assuming the joy will wash over us like, like the scent of a Christmas tree, we need, to break, we need to become the ones dispensing the joy. Try not to do something every day to brighten it someone else's day. Small, sorry. Small acts of kindness might not change the world, but it could change you. And it offers a way to serve the world with gladness. Okay. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity in one God, have mercy on us. May we understand your holy will. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we realize our true relationship with you in this life and the life to come. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we continue to work with you in building your kingdom on earth. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we unite ourselves with you in the sacred mystery of the altar. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we recognize the greatness of this most holy sacrifice through which we worship you. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we feed on the bread of life, no more to hunger. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we have a share in the offering of Jesus on the cross. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we fulfill our lives with your ideals. Be joined with you in the suffer of the Lord. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we perceive always and everywhere your all pervading presence. Grant our prayer, Lord. May we end our day in your holy name, in our hearts and on our lips. Grant our prayer, Lord. Forgive our sins, O God. Grant our prayer, Lord. Cleanse and renew our hearts. Grant our prayer, Lord. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen.
I welcome you here for this, the third Sunday of Advent, and thus the candle of joy, which is a little less harsh than the other three purple candles, and that's that message that even though we're only preparing, we can't keep all of that joy locked down as we start thinking about the coming of the Bethlehem child. And so today, with that message being uh, throughout the prayers of the Mass, the Sermon of the Mass, and always with that uh, visual reminder right there, um, I mentioned to you that tomorrow snow is coming, and that's going to bring a lot of smiles to your faces, and uh, we're hoping and praying that it's not going to turn to rain, that it'll stay in snow, and that just makes everything so pure and white and clean. Oh, it's just going to be beautiful. And so that's another message of Christmas joy. And so for all of you who have said those snow prayers, thank you very much. So as we do gather now for this third Sunday of uh, Advent and uh, in that beautiful message of the coming joy, I ask you to please make a private examination of your conscience. Because you said there were two or three are gathered together in my name, you are among them. We also ask, Lord, that through this holy liturgy, we may experience a spiritual revival and a better understanding of your holy will, bringing us together in one great family, guided by your commandments of love, truth, and justice. And, and may we say together, let us pray for the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, indivisible, revealed in triune power, for all time, now, and forever. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we joyfully approach the celebration of your Son's birth. May he bring us pardon and freedom from the burden of our sins. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. I'm here, Father. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of dramatic influence. <laughs> The lesson prescribed by the church for this morning's Holy Mass is taken from the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. <clears throat> Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. 
He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For the water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads and they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sign shall flee away. This is the word of the Lord. Happy are those whose help is Jacob's God, whose hope is in the Lord their God, the maker of heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them. Alleluia, alleluia. Lo, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the day of the Lord come. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, should cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim this holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Matthew. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of Jesus, he sent his disciples to him with this question, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? And Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and what you see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. And as they were returning to John, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and even more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of God is even greater than he. This is the gospel of the Lord. happening. 
It is all of this happening, they think about it, and then they write again about Jesus. So this hindsight colors the New Testament story. So every single word is not current, but it is after the resurrection. So those hard to explain passages, the ones that don't yell out the usual traditional Jesus story, are the ones that go right back to the very earliest history of Jesus, the ones that go right back to that story when Jesus was walking in sandals through Galilee and people really weren't sure what to do with him. And one of those gems is buried in today's gospel. We all, I think, know the stories of John the Baptist and Jesus. John is absolutely sure who Jesus is according to the familiar teaching of the church. There can be no doubt when, according to the Bible, the heavens part and God's voice declares Jesus to be his son. So after John witnesses this, the heavens saying, this is my son, how in the world do we explain what happens in today's reading? John is in prison. The end of his life is not far off. Herod is going to kill this man. He sends some of his own disciples, people who are following John, even while Jesus has already got his disciples and Jesus has already started his ministry, there are still people following John. And he tells them, go to Jesus, and you ask them this question for me. Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Are you the one who is to come? What happened to the heavens parting and God saying, this is my son? What about those, all those Christmas stories about Mary going over to Elizabeth and the babe leaps in her womb? Now you've got John almost at the point of death and he says, are you the one? Now this again reinforces the theme that in Jesus, God has surprised us one and all. Jesus was not who John expected the Messiah to be. If you were here last Sunday, maybe you remember the reading. John is out in the wilderness. He's preaching, you brood of vipers. And those are the kind words he's saying to the people who are actually coming to him. Imagine the things he's saying about the people who don't bother. You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath that is to come? Now these are the words of an angry prophet. And they are sharing the words of a vengeful God. Then comes Jesus. He's born in humble circumstances. And we're going to celebrate that in only a couple weeks' time. And eventually he comes preaching the gospel message of love and compassion and forgiveness. And because the two messages are so diametrically different, John simply could not figure out who in the world this Jesus was. And that's the reason for his question. Are you the one? You know, that's that Advent theme again, that ours is a God of surprises. Are you the one? And you know, each and every one of us who knows Jesus so well, we're active churchgoers. We can always still ask that question. Are you the one? Is there something about Jesus that should be challenging us to you know, leave our traditional thinking behind and to move on to where God wants us to go? Are you the one, Jesus? What, what do you want from me? What do you need from me? But here's the kicker in the story. After John's disciples leave, Jesus explains John to the crowd. And he says of John, this is the one about whom it is written. I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare the way before you. And John had just asked, are you the one? Today's Advent candle is the candle of joy. And that's why that candle is of the rose color. That potential color of purple is lightened a little bit by the theme of approaching joy as we get closer to that surprise of Bethlehem. But what is so joyous about a man of God who is near death and is wondering if Jesus is the one that he's been waiting for, or should I keep looking for someone else? There's no certainty of belief to latch on to at the end of his life. There's no assurance for John that his ministry was at all successful. He has to be wondering if he got everything wrong. He has to be wondering, where is this joy? And before I take that any further, let me tell you about last Sunday afternoon. I attended the celebration gathering at the South Deerfield Congregational Church they will sadly be closing their doors in January, and this was their celebration of nearly 200 years of life. I guarantee no one ever thought that this day would be coming just shy of the 200th year, but you know, that's another one of those ideas that we just don't know what happens tomorrow. And the parishioners were encouraged to share their stories. And one woman mentioned how she loved Reverend Will Sensible's humor Sundays, which he usually held right around April Fool's Day. And she retold, for those who us gathered together, one of his jokes. And she said that it surprised and it stunned her coming out of her minister's mouth and from the sanctuary of her church. 
And it was funny, and we all laughed, and I am not at all brave enough to share that joke with you from up here. And she retold the joke all these years later, and after all of us laughed, Reverend Will, who was also there, he chimed in that she probably didn't remember any of his sermon messages, but six years later, she still remembered this one joke. <coughs> you know, whatever we do, how, you know, what we say, what we do, once we've said it, once we've done it, it's out of our control, and it takes on a life of its own. So now back to John the Baptist. The message of joy that I hear in the confusion of John is the message that even when we don't see or we can't envision the good that we are doing or the impression that we are making, that God can still be working through us. I find much joy in the idea that God can use any of us and that he can use all of us for his greater good, even if we don't realize how, even if we don't realize now, that even if we have to close our eyes in death and go to the next world not exactly sure how much of a difference we made, that somehow with faith and that perseverance in God, that God can work through us. We don't have to know how. We only have to have the faith that God knows how. Things don't always have to go as we expect for the God of surprises to be able to act through us. John, John was anticipating an angry God, and instead got a little baby born in an animal's danger, an animal's manger, and there's not even an own country, he's not even in his own house, and he's got this, this whole wonderful message of a God that came as the lowest common denominator so that no one could be beyond the reach of Jesus. I don't have time to go into it now, but there's a real possibility that John prepared the way for Jesus by exposing Jesus to that message of an angry God. Jesus could have been one of those people in that group around John. He could have been out there listening before he was baptized by John. And John is spewing all of this, this message of an angry God. And Jesus is sitting out there, maybe not yet certain about what his ministry will be. Because remember, he's still got that whole time in the desert where he's got to figure out who he is. And Jesus may be sitting there in the midst of that crowd around John, listening to that message. And maybe Jesus is saying, that's not my God. John pulls away from society. He preaches a fire to come. Maybe Jesus is sitting in that crowd. Maybe Jesus is saying, that's not my God. And maybe that's why Jesus did the opposite of John. And instead of going away from people, going out to the desert, Jesus sought out everybody. The sinners, the tax collectors, the prostitutes, the diseased, the spies, and all of the ordinary. And he told them not about a scary God, but about a God of love. Maybe John prepared the way of Jesus but in a way that John could never, ever have expected. I love this God of surprises, and that's why I love this season of Advent, of preparing in our lives for the unexpected coming of God into our world and into our souls. There's much joy to be found in the promise that we don't know everything about God and the world and its plans for us. We just don't know where God is planning to take us, but the, what we can do is trust in God and let him work through us. This leaves the door open for God to continually surprise us and to challenge us. Confusion is possible, and I hope we're beginning to hear this, this Advent season that it is even inevitable. But this just means that we have to keep taking that next step, and after that next step, another step, always going closer to God, always being open to God, always to keep looking for God. May this be our Advent prayer of a continuing joyous surprise in that uh, two weeks or so, we'll come here, we'll have that manger, and we'll celebrate the birth of Jesus as one of us in a holy, unexpected way. May this be our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty Lord, we gather before your altar on this, the Advent Sunday of joy. We offer our prayers in loving memory of Victoria Andres and the 23rd anniversary of her death is offered by Pat and Bob Blakesley. We offer prayers for Jonathan Swan on the 4th anniversary of his passing. And this is being offered by his best friend, Don Skrosky, Ellen Skrosky, and the Kirkendall and Gates families. We offer our prayers at this time um, also for Betty Hollingsworth. Um, these prayers are being offered by Doug Tierney. 
Then he worked tirelessly on the memorial committee to document and to honor those who served in the armed services. It even took our own School of Christian Living students to our cemetery to share some of the stories of the veterans there buried. She died this past Friday evening. May she rest in peace. We also continue to offer our prayers for the following, all battling cancer. Meg Connors by Ellen and Don Sprosky. Brandy Clements by her grandmother, Dottie Baronis. Fathers Ray Drada and Maurice Lazelle was offered by myself. Richard Poe was offered by the Poe and Foster families. Two-year-old Jack Sela is offered by Marianna Foster. Frank Sprosky, uh, offered by uh, Don Sprosky and Ellen Sprosky, who are down there visiting him right now, and also the rest of the Sprosky, Gates, and Kirk and Dahl families. We also continue our prayers for Alex, who is 16 years old, battling with lymphoma, Hodgkin's disease, Alicia, a young mother of three with stage four breast cancer, and Liz Bridgman, um, also diagnosed with cancer and raising three young girls on her own, is all offered by Cindy Benjamin. Are there any prayers that you would like to offer from the congregation? For all of these prayers, Lord, plus the ones that we keep in the privacy of our thoughts, we ask the Lord to hear all of them. We ask you to bless each and every one of us here gathered, and to bless also those of our parish who are unable to be with us here today, and those of our parish who have chosen not to be with us here today. And for these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being of the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, down in heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified by the conscious pilot, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the Lord, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy and Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism in the forgiveness of sins. I let the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all may believe through him. We receive from your most sacred hands, most gracious Father, the sacramental bread, the same faith and trust to the apostles and disciples of your Son and our Savior.
resurrection and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, in honor of Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Heavenly Father, prepare our hearts to receive your Son, the gift of life and of peace, who will become present in this sacred offering of the Mass. We ask this through the same, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Jesus Christ our Lord, for through the promise sending of Jesus Christ to earth for us, you revealed your goodness and unending love, sharing the hope of patriarchs and prophets. May we worthy prepare a dwelling place for the coming Messiah in our hearts. Therefore, the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We therefore, most merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, most humbly beseech you to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy unspotted sacrifices, which your holy church receives from you, employ you to defend and guide it throughout the world, together with her priests and all true believers of the holy faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. congregation, imbued with faith in your holy care, your rule and fatherly love. Wholeheartedly this day, we unite the spirit with all of those who give the most blessed Mother Mary, Mother of Jesus Christ, likewise as apostles with all the countless hosts of martyrs and confessors who lived, labored, and suffered for the same holy cause which Jesus Christ <laughs> sacrificed his life and his most precious blood. Just as they believed, professed, and united with you through prayer and this immaculate oblation, which you have instituted from the beginning of the world and in time have fulfilled through Jesus Christ and gave it to humanity as a pledge of eternal salvation. So we too this day profess and unite ourselves with you, most gracious Father, in humbleness of spirit and accept from your hands this holy bread and this precious chalice as a long for gift bestowed on us by the Savior of the world as spiritual food and drink. He promised us this food and drink in that moment when he revealed his divine power by the multiplication of bread and feeding with a hungry multitude of people. Afterward, he foretold the giving of that food and drink to his disciples and friends as a more excellent nourishment when he said, It is my Father who gives you the real heavenly bread. I myself and the living bread come down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And afterwards, when the temporal and messianic life of the divine teacher and giver of the covenant was drawing to a close, he gathered into the upper room all those whom he loved in a singular way and had chosen to continue his work of salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphans. I will come back to you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Do not be distressed or fearful. You will suffer in the world, but take courage. I have overcome the world. If you live in me, and my words stay a part of you, you may ask what you will, and it will be done for you. Anyone who loves me will be true to my word, and my Father will love him. We will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. 
I consecrate myself for their sakes now, that they may be consecrated in truth, that all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be made complete. Father, all those you gave me, I would have in my company, where I am to see this glory of mine, which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these and other words of the archpriestly prayer and with holy fervor, our Savior took, <coughs> took bread into his holy and venerable hand, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, mindful Lord, we are servants as also your faithful people, in the remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension. We receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance, as from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly ask, you, Almighty God, to command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity. To these souls, Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting life. And to those who are in life's great in the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully shorten their suffering. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints, who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine Master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen by whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence,
firstborn from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, is also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our days, supported by the help of your mercy, that we all be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment, Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Shall I return to the Lord for all the graces that He has given me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to see you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
combining in the dead of night. The body and the blood of Christ. 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 The body and the blood of Christ.
Lord our God, we thank you for coming, for the coming of your Son, in his holy word, and in this holy Eucharist. Open our eyes to the needs of the sick and the poor, for unless we see him and our brothers and sisters, we will never recognize his final coming. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you, through your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came to being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found light, the light of the light of men. The light shines on in darkness, the darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made. Yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, to his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he had power to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's holiness, but by God. And the word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son, coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thank you. Thank you, God.